So notifications are extremely crucial for fintech companies as it is a way to notify a user about an incoming transaction. Hence, it becomes extremely important for companies like Razorpay to ensure that the notification is delivered to the user within a certain amount of time. In this video, we take a detailed look into how Razorpay scale their notification systems and look at their high level architecture and key design decisions they made along their way to ensure that they always meet their SLAs. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year and a half now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue at all. Instead, a small focused group of 50 to 60 engineers will be brainstorming the systems and designing it together. This way, we build a very solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course is enrolled by 800 plus engineers spanning 12 cohorts and 12 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The course is focused on building systems the way they are built in the real world. We will be focusing heavily on building the right intuition so that you are ready to build any and every system out there. We will be discussing the trade-offs of every single decision we make just like how you do in your team. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toilet balancer to quick buses live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale. In all, we would be covering roughly 28 systems and the detailed curriculum split week by week can be found in the course page linked in the description down below. So if you're looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course and the second one is the recorded offering. The live cohort based course happens once every two months and will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to learn and want to binge learn system design, I would recommend going you for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live code is where you can participate and discuss the systems and its design live with me and the entire cohort. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhani.me slash masterclass. I repeat arpitbhani.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I have also put the link of this course page in the description down below and I am looking forward to see you in my next cohort. So notification systems are primarily your outbound communications. For example, SMSs, emails, push, webhooks and whatnot. Now you would see why a company like Razorpay, a finance company or a fintech company would want notifications. The idea is pretty simple. For example, if there are two people, A and B, and A and uh, A made a payment via Razorpay, and it has to reach the B. So B is running a business. B is using Razorpay. A is a customer. A made the purchase. Now Razorpay needs to send A the email about the about the invoice as the confirmation of the transaction, and it wants to send a push notification to B. It might also need to invoke B's webhook so that B's external systems are integrated through it works just fine. For example, B wants to send a Slack notification via webhook. Razorpay would need to call webhook of B to do that. So this is where sending notifications become extremely critical for finance companies. Now think about it. If you are receiving a payment but you have not received a notification, you would be wondering, hey, where is that gone? Because that person is calling you that, hey, I made the notification, I sent a payment. You say I didn't receive it because I never received a notification. So you have to open the Razorpay console to see that hey you indeed received the uh, the money right so this is what this is why it's extremely important to maintain an SLA now here let's see how this payment system is built at Razorpay right now or rather the existing flow and then how they made it better right so first thing the existing flow is pretty simple so what happens there is some once the transaction is done it comes to the api server api server pushes a message to sqs sqs is a message broker it gets that event now sqs from this a bunch of workers take up this event the workers are the consumers of sqs they take up this event then they send it to executor now these two can be same code base i'm just drawing it as two separate diagram because their block showed as two separate diagram but this could very well be one same code base on one same machine running Right. So worker takes it to executor, executor. Now this is where one very interesting design 
like one very interesting design decision comes in. Executor sends the outbound communication. So if it's SMS, it sends the SMS. If it's email, executor sends the email and whatnot. But it makes an entry for that in the MySQL DB. Now you'll think, hey, why would a company need to store the messages that are sent to the user in a database? The answer to this is very simple. Given that it is transactional information, when A sent money to B, and if A is not receiving a message or a B is not receiving a message, that's a problem. So because this is where the heart and soul of a good fintech company lies in that they give the best user experience. Now to do this, to ensure that the message is definitely delivered to A and B, they have to keep a track of it in a database so that in case there is a error in sending it, a scheduler can pick that up and do the retry. So that is where you would have a scheduler component whose job is to pick the message that needs to be retried and then reschedule it in SQS and so that it can be consumed again. So this is the idea. This is why this is the current architecture. One very interesting design decision that we saw is about persisting the outbound communication in a database. So, so that because here uh, guaranteeing or basically a guaranteed delivery is essential. Right. So here, what was the problem with this architecture? The problem with this architecture was that the P99 drops from two second to four second for more than 1000 transactions per second. So as soon as their systems hit the limit of 1000 transactions per second, the response time of this, the SLA drops from two second or rather their P99 latencies drop from two second to four second, which is not acceptable. Like for them, it's not acceptable for most companies out there thinking hey, it's good enough. But for them, it's not acceptable. They're very high standards. So this is where they thought of, hey, let's rebuild. Right. So now, what were the existing challenges with scaling? Challenge number one, read load on the database during peak. Because now here, if you look at it, in order to send the notification, it would need a lot of information about the user, the transaction, the sender email, SMS, sorry, email, phone numbers, webhook and whatnot. It would need that. Plus the database, the database in which they are storing this communication that needs to be scaled and whatnot. So at peak, this would start to choke off. And that's the problem. So, and this is not just the write load, but also the read load because a lot of other systems are also relying on that. Right, so read load would increase during the peak. You'd say, Ki, hey, let me add a read replica. But at scale, even adding a read replica, even doing a lot of vertical scaling might not be the best decision because it would not work. Right. And the next thing is scaling the workers. You would think that, hey, when I'm getting a lot of messages to send, I'll just add more workers to that. But if you think about it, if you add more workers to that, what happens to your database? Your database has limited IO operations, which means that let's say your database can only handle 300 concurrent connections. And if you have 500 workers, this wouldn't work. Your workers would choke off and your database would be overburdened. Problem. So that is where when you think of horizontal scaling, it's not that your database, you can in one click scale that up and it would scale immediately. It's not elastic because databases are not elastic. That's where what you have to do is you'd have to ensure that your database is very well provisioned. If you think about it, that your database needs to be very well provisioned. The problem with this comes in is that you would have to have a very heavily provisioned database. So you are provisioning a database for the peak that is not happening anytime soon. That happens once a while. Problem. So you would be losing money. You are not making a cost efficient architecture. So that is problem with scaling. Second problem with scaling. Third problem with scaling is surge during special events. For example, during IPL matches, during festive seasons, during some year end thing where a lot of people are making transactions. A lot of transactions go through razor pay. This is where they see surges happening in their system. Handling them becomes a pain. So these are the three key challenges, challenges that comes with surges. Now, let's see how they re-architected their solution. So their re-architecture happened as a very nice incremental changes. Now let's go through that journey. First, prioritizing incoming load. So in the first architecture that we saw, it was straightforward. We have to send a notification. It comes to SQS, worker picks up, executor sends a notification and entries made in the database. It's dead, dead simple. But if you think about it, not all notifications are equal. Because transactional information much more important than marketing pushes because razor pay through their challenge like they can also like a business can also send notifications to their customers like maybe reminder for payment and whatnot right so some messages are much more important much more critical than some other type of messages 
then second is one type of notification should not affect other for example if i am sending my transactional info let's say if i am sending a big marketing push a big random that i am sending a hey, please like a uh, let's say a happy new year message to all of the customers now when this is happening you are, you are like imagine razor pay sending this to 20 million people but during that time let's say a transactional message needs to be sent now with this queued up this 20 million message queued up when would that one transactional message get its chance so that is where one type of event like making others starve is not a good design so that is where the solution to this is queues so what Razorpay did is they created separate queues with different priorities. So P0 queue, P1 queue, P2 queue. So P0 is the ultimate priority. P1 is a default queue. P2 is the marketing burst queue. Right. So what you can do is your API server, when it pushes the message, instead of pushing it to one SQS queue, like only one SQS queue, API server needs to decide, ki, hey, this is the type of message. Now this type of message, does it deserve a P0, a P1 or P2? API server would know ki, hey, if it's a transactional, let me send it to P0. If it's a burst marketing message, let me send it to P2. The default priority stays at P1. Right. So that is how you would get that separation of concern. You would always ensure that a transactional message is always picked up, is very efficiently picked up as soon as possible and is sent. Right. Even though a big marketing push is happening, you are not getting affected. Your transactional messages are still going. But if you think about it, you would also need a rate limiter because now what could happen is that each queue event and customer to ensure that you are giving consistent performance or rather consistent experience to all of your users, all of your customers. You need to ensure that even if one of the uh, one of the customer is abusing it, let's say a customer sent notification and that let's say that customer has a million customers, hypothetical situation. And if that customer sent large number of messages like a bulk happy new year message, now what would happen is that because of that one customer, one because of that one notorious customer, every other customer is getting impacted. Even though it sends to P2, all of them, all the other messages sent by other customers are getting, they, they, they are basically getting starved. So that is where what there needs to be is there needs to be a rate limiter module. This rate limiter module would have per customer, per queue, per event type rate limits. And if it is within the limit, it goes to the queue. If it is not, which means you are not directly dropping it, you will be putting it into a separate rate limited events queue. And then you would be slowly processing it. So you are having three queues for three types of priority and a fourth queue for all the events that breached your rate limiting. Right? This is a very important design decision. And now the second thing is that your database, we just spoke about in uh, a couple of minutes back that how database is becoming a bottleneck. So now this database, the main, the MySQL database in which the executor was updating it, the entry, the scheduler was reading from it to see if any messages needs to be retried. Now this database becomes a bottleneck because this database cannot scale. So why it was not able to scale? Because a writes were being synchronous. If I add large number of workers, let's say if I add 500 workers, if my database only handles 300 IOPS, like rather 300 concurrent connections. What would happen is because it has limit of 300, I cannot scale my workers more than 300. But I need to support that many. So what do you do? So what they did is they started writing to the database asynchronously. And this is what their higher level architecture looks like. Where you have your user, you have your API server, you have your rate limiter. Rate limiter, all the notification events goes through rate limiter rate limiter knows hey where do i need to send it like it does the rate limiting check and then it pushes into either priority zero priority one or priority two queue and if it is rate limited or which means that particular event user consumer breached it everything goes into this rate limited events queue from where a secondary consumer might pick that up and then once it hits the worker it goes to executor now this is where the change is happening from the executor Instead of executor directly writing to the MySQL DB, executor pushes an update to Kinesis. Kinesis is a message stream similar to Kafka. It pushes a message to Kinesis and then it writes to MySQL. This way, your executor is not synchronously writing to the DB. Your DB can still remain small. Your DB does not need to be humongous, right? Because it does not need to handle a large number of write load. It can consume the events slowly and steadily from Kinesis and make the updates. Right. And even your retries are not very fast. Like it's not very frequent, sorry, fast, very frequent retries. Frequent, your retries could be once every two hours. So in two hours, your messages would definitely be consumed from Kinesis. 
right? And then your normal scheduler flow remains the same. So when your scheduler picks up from the MySQL and sees what which messages needs to be retried and it pushes them back to the SQS. And that's how this normal flow happens. But so this is where that one bottleneck, that one IO bottleneck of your database is solved by not writing to the database synchronously, but rather asynchronously. So executor writes to Kinesis, Kinesis writes to the database. But one key important design fragment that we have to think about is observability. Like unless we knew that which component is the bottleneck, how are we going to optimize on it? Right. So that is where for a notification system, having an end to end visibility is extremely important. The first thing that comes is that you need to have ample amounts of dashboards. Like you may use Grafana or any of your favorite visualization tool to see and constantly monitor what's happening. Then set up the right set of alerts. So if any message breaches their SLA, there should be an alert. Then look for anomalies. See if a customer has just sent message to a million people or not. If there are anomalies, track them. So that is where you need to have this exhaustive tracking happening in the system so that you can take those calls because your rate limiter also needs monitoring. Every single system needs monitoring. You need to constantly check for, you need to constantly monitor for the health checks of your worker, executor, scheduler. So that you, if you don't know if your executor is down, then your messages in your SQS would continue to pile up. And that is an extremely poor user experience. So you need to have exhaustive monitoring, health checks everywhere. Then success ratio, which means that out of 100 messages, so just a sample, out of 100 messages, or rather, let me be explicit, how, what percentage of messages were sent within one second, within two second, within three second, within four second, depending on what their SLA is. Right. If I think, if I say four second is the max that they can go to, they need to see this distribution. So this kind of success rate needs to be there. And just to ensure the overall SLA, are they meeting it or not? They need to have a very clear visibility of it. And these are the factors that goes in designing real systems where you think about cost at every single stage. You just don't draw boxes. You think about implementation. You think about cost. You think about observability. You think about stability of the system. And that is how RazorPay designed or rather re-architected their notification system. And this is what you would see at most companies out there. Just minor glitches or minor changes here or there. But overall architecture would still remain the same. And that is it. That is it for this one. I hope you found it amusing. I did. I thoroughly enjoyed it when I was reading through their, through their engineering blog. So great. If you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub. I post three in-depth engineering videos every week and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.